Hello and happy single to Mayo. It is Andrew McDonald here without Sam Harper. Uh, well, for another talk map almost daily because we missed yesterday and that's why the title is almost daily. Didn't want to miss two days. So here's a couple quick stories for you that I just want to go over because it seems like something to talk about. First off, studios fire back, say the WGA's mandatory staffing demands are incompatible with creativity. Basically, production companies are saying uh, having a hiring quota is going to be bad. It's bad for creativity. What's also bad for creativity is probably having AI write shows. I mean, look, I'm a big proponent of AI. AI is cool. Things are happening. Kind of exciting times. But eh, there's a bit of ickiness to being able to take AI, feed it 30 years of Simpsons scripts, and then spit out a new Simpsons uh, script by just saying, hey, how about one where Homer goes on The View and becomes the new host because people love him so much. And then having like one good writer that you pay for a full-time staff job, clean it up, script doctor it, and be like, but by the way, you didn't actually write all this. You were a part-time writer because the studio wrote it or the AI that we ran the script through first wrote it for the studio. Yeah, there's a lot of problems here. And I think this writer strike is probably going to be a bit messier than the 2007 one, which arguably happened because of the incomingness of streaming, which was going to affect the world and change everything, and did. AI and other things, and, you know, basically the fall over from streaming being on this whole time, people not getting residuals, is still a problem. So it's going to be messy, because unfortunately Hollywood can very easily, and streaming services as a whole, can just grab content from anywhere in the world now and screw over American writers even more so let's hope for the best moving on to the next thing spider-verse the sequel is one of the longest animated films ever which is saying a lot but yes apparently it's going to be 136 minutes that's two hours and 16 minutes that's not quite end game but it's pretty dang on close uh the spider-verse is swinging for the fences they are looking to make a spider epic for animated uh, films. Needless to say, I'm probably not taking my kids to this because while she sat through the Mario movie, I'm not sure she's gonna make it through this. And I tried to watch Spider-Verse once with her and uh, you know, she thought it was scary 10 minutes in. So yeah, probably not, but excited for Spider-Verse. I'll probably watch it when it comes to my home, but yeah. Moving on to one of our last topics. Well, one of our two last. Discord announces force name changes, pisses everybody off. Basically Discord, big chat for service, super popular. I use it all the time to talk about nonsense. Um, has had an interesting way of handling names. You pick a name, it assigns you the name, and then it adds numbers at the end of the prefix. So if there's someone else out in the universe who has that name, the same name can coexist. Discord is not gonna basically say, no, everyone gets one name. You get the name. Um, I, I, is it even on a server or is it anywhere? Totally. Every Discord name is user sensitive. Case has four digits into it, yada, yada, yada. Not content, they're gonna make the change. So preferred name across Discord. So it's gonna be basically yeah, across everything. So one name, one change, one thing. So from a privacy standpoint, I'm sure there are people out there who don't want their one name associated with every Discord they're friends of. Uh, because, you know, I'm sure there are some, you know, embarrassing Discords, but probably some also terrible, like, awful, awful discords out there. So that's gonna suck. Um, but yeah, needless to say, uh, reactions have not been kind. Discord name change is a backward step. Uh, Discord username, it's like your phone number was changed. And it said, hey, your phone number is your only name. This is for convenience, hope it helps. This blog post sucks so much. These two things have never happened to anyone on the planet. When I need to post my full Discord username, I just paste it from Discord. If I wanna show some of my name, I load up my phone. Needless to say, people are not happy about this. Um, we'll see. Maybe it'll get turned over, or maybe this will go through. Because you know, what else are you going to use if you're not using Discord? You got to go to Slack. You got to go to Teams. You're not going to go to that. So we'll see. And last but not least, Teenage Mutant Turtles: Splintered Fate looks like a Ninja Turtle game. That's like Hades. Okay, I didn't know about this until like a few minutes before we started. Super excited. Hades. Honestly, game of the year last year. I don't care what won actually in truth. It was God of War, Ragnarok, I think for most places. No, no, it was Hades. Hades was game of the year. And the idea that we're going to get a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that's like Hades? Uh, dude. Roguelike Ninja Turtles game? 
sounds amazing. I don't know who who's making this. Super Evil Mega Corp, the studio behind MOBA hits like Vain Glory and Catalyst Black. I've never played either of those. The, the, the game is available now through Apple Arcade and playable on Apple TV, iOS, and Mac computers. I'm, I'm sorry. This game is out. Um, cool. Well, that was uh, Talking Up Daily, totally original Geek News podcast. Well, almost daily. And um, I hope you enjoyed. And we'll see you on Monday when there's more news to talk about because part of this week was kind of boring. I'm going to go play this before I go pick up my kids. Later.